to feel on act like the actual race day okay so let me walk you through it um i have never been more nervous in my life this is why there are layers to it so like the first layer being it's like it's the boston marathon like it's such a big deal and it's so much of a bigger deal in production than la and also like LA, like I will, I woke up in my apartment and I like had my normal breakfast and like my mom dropped me off at Dodger Stadium. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Whereas with Boston, it's like, okay, I'm like, I flew across the country. It's like the bit, it's one of the biggest days of the year in Boston. And it's like, you have to, you get dropped, you go to the Boston Common, there are all these buses, there are so many runners. It literally felt like the Hunger Games. Like they like, <laughs> Us, they bus you out to this like small suburb and the Boston course is like a straight line. So they're literally like, you're, they're, you're driving out and you're like, I'm literally, they don't drive you on the course, but you're like, I'm running back to the city from here. It's like the craziest thing. So I was just nervous wow. because of that. And then also like, there's the whole fact that like, okay, I've already run a marathon and I ran it really fast. So like, I have obviously the pressure on myself, like, I had lofty goals for this race and my training block showed that like I was in really good shape. So I was just like nervous because I knew I wanted to run fast and I knew it was going to be hard. And then um, I was also just nervous because I felt like I was, I've put myself out there a lot um, in this training cycle, which is like what I want to do with like my platform and my social media and stuff. But it's also like kind of like weird knowing how many eyes are on you, you know, um, and it's, it was a different phenomenon than how I felt with LA. Um, but it was also like really cool to know how many people were like supporting me and stuff. Um, but that definitely added like another layer of jitters. Um, but yeah, the morning of, I was like literally so nervous. I was nervous. I was a nervous wreck for like the full two weeks before. Um, and I kept checking the weather like a maniac, which like, ended up not doing anything because it was so hot but like I was checking the weather I was like thinking about all these different scenarios and it just like everyone was just like you need to calm down um so yeah it's the most nervous I've ever been for anything for sure and I know you said it was the hardest thing you've ever done like yeah. specifically there was a certain mile that you hit where you like started to question and doubt yourself Talk about that experience, kind of getting over that, that hurdle. Yeah. Um, it was really, really hard for me. I well, like to backtrack basically. Well, I mean, we might get into this, but like I was feeling, I knew it was hot. Like when I was walking to the start line and I was like, maybe a cold front will come in. Like I didn't try to get ahead of myself, like whatever. Um, and I felt great for the first 10 and then like a little after that, I was like, I'm definitely working harder than I should be right now um, for like this point in the race. Um, and it just all went downhill after that. Um, and then like mile 16 through 21, there are these four huge hills. And I don't even know what to compare them to. Like they aren't like running up a mountain, but like when you're 16, the, the reason they're so hard is because you're 16 miles into a race. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's not like it's like in LA, there's like a one hill at mile four, but it's like it's mile four. It's not mile 16. It's very different. So anyway, um, they just wrecked me. And yeah, it was, I had my first like twinge of like, oh my God, I have so much more to go. Probably like at the halfway point. I was like, I wasn't like, I'm not going to, I wasn't like, can I finish? But I was like, damn, like I have a lot of race left. And then around like 22 or 23, I just like, I felt so awful at that point. And, um, I knew I wasn't ever going to actually quit. Like I was kind of being drama, but <laughs> I also was in so, I was hurting so bad. Like it's, I, I don't even know how to explain it. And my, it was so funny, my phone. So I keep my phone in my pocket of my shorts and it's so hot. So at every water station, I was dumping water on myself. So like my hair is all knotted from like the water and like I'm, my body's, first of all, I'm sweating, but I'm also like soaking wet from all the water. So I pull my phone out to call my boyfriend, Max, and my phone is soaking wet. So the screen isn't working and I'm like still running and I'm like trying. And here's the thing. I can't dry it off because my entire body is wet with water and sweat. So I literally had to hold my phone for like 
half mile a mile to like get it to dry in the air to be able to like use the screen. And I called him and I started walking and I was like, I don't know if I can do this. But again, like I, I think I just needed words of encouragement at that point, but I knew I never was actually going to step off the course. I would have never forgave myself if I stepped off the course. Um, and four miles felt like, like so long at that point. Cause that's how far I was from the finish. But I kind of just was like, this sucks, but like, you will never forgive yourself if you stop. And I was running really slow at that point. I was running like 10 minute miles. It's just like, I don't even do that on my super easy runs. Like it's so, and like, I don't want to say it's embarrassing, but it's like, I was going really slow, but like, I still crossed the finish line and that's what matters. And I think that like, in order to get over like that mental block, I just had to be like, this is the hardest thing I've ever done, but like, it's only going to make me stronger. And like, I didn't, I knew I didn't really have a choice. Like I knew I had to finish the race. Um, but it was, it was crazy for sure. That is crazy. It's such a mental marathon is such a mental game more like more than anything. Cause it's such a long day. Mm -hmm. You don't realize how long it is until you're in it and you're like, Oh my goodness. And yeah. you can play tricks on yourself. Are you more proud of, getting over that mental hurdle of how of running Boston and, and like conquering like the hills and how hard it was and how difficult it was than you are of your LA or are they just two very separate things? I definitely think that they're separate and I'm proud of myself for both of them in different ways. But I do think that like in terms of just an overall feat, I'm more proud of Boston just because it was so brutal out there. And I easily could have thrown in the towel if I wasn't like tough and didn't have like the mental capacity to get through it. Um, and I mean, the good thing about it is that like my first, the first half of the race was still, I was running fast, like all sub sevens, like in between 640 and 655 were like, I was clipping away. So that set me up because like I still ran a 324 which like to me is awful but to a normal human it's still like great I that'd don't be a great that. race for someone like me <laughs> <laughs> so like I can't be that upset about it it's just for me I'm like that sucks so much because my fitness showed I was so much faster um so Anyway, it's like, I'm proud because not only did I finish, it was really hard. Like I still finished with a good time. If it was like a 345, like I probably would be saying I'm way more proud of my LA time, but like it could have been worse. Um, but yeah, getting through it mentally was definitely like a huge test for me. And like, I'm very proud of myself that I just like followed through and crossed the finish line because it was, it was tough. It is, it is. I feel like I would be, if I were in your shoes, I'd be happy with that Boston just because like, it is sometimes hard to like, physically you're a fast runner and like, you know that, but sometimes like you aren't challenged mentally, I would say. So like mm -hmm. sometimes for me, I was like, when I did the triathlon and my goggles snapped in the beginning no. of the race, I swam oh, my, without goggles. That's my biggest fear. Yeah. Well, so, not, like, actually, not actively because <laughs> I don't swim, but like, I get it. Like That's bad. <laughs> Yeah, so like I was actually like more proud of I didn't get my time that I wanted, but I was more proud of the fact that like I overcame something that was like put in my way that like almost yeah. like I don't know, God was like, do like deal with this. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, yeah. I just feel like those those moments where you're like, all right, I pushed through something that I was so unexpected. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when you were preparing for the race, did you have like how does someone prepare mentally for that? Cause like, it's almost like a, it's unexpected. Like you weren't expecting the weather to be that hot. You weren't expecting, you can't control it. So how does someone, how did you learn to kind of like adapt to those situations? So I think like through training, like, especially this training block, it wasn't very linear. Um, like, and by that, I mean, I only ran 20 miles one time, whereas versus my LA buildup, I got to 23 different times. It just how my travel schedule and sickness and stuff worked out. 
this training block wasn't linear. And I also definitely had some like really shitty runs during it. So I think that that kind of like helps you prepare mentally in a way, like when you're on a long run alone, like, and it's like pitch black out when you're starting and you're just, it's like a Friday morning at 5am and you're like, this sucks. Like that helps you mentally just like get into like a space where you're like, this sucks. And then also those runs that are really hard. Like if every training run felt amazing, then you like you wouldn't know how to like overcome the pain that inevitably happens on race day because races will never be painless um if you're going all out um and then so I think like a big part of training is just like having those shitty runs and like getting through them and that's like showing yourself that you can really do it and then other than that like the only thing that you can really bring to the start line on race day is confidence in your training and trusting the work that you did. And, um, I did do that. Like I, even though my training block wasn't perfect or linear, like I was very proud of it. And I knew that I had fast miles in me and I, I'd done some great work. And so, um, you can't control the weather or like other factors, but like you have to trust your training and just know that like, what you're going to run is like the best to your ability if your training block went like pretty well. So, um, that's just kind of like the mental game you have to play. Um, but it's hard because sometimes you're like, Oh my God, like, what if I'm not ready? And I in fact was not ready for the heat. So. Yeah. That's just such an uncontrollable though. Like, Mm -hmm. like running in heat, I prefer to run in heat or play in heat in the cold Mm -hmm. but crazy it it can get so hot where you're just like i just want this to end (laughs) like it's so hot well the crazy thing was is that so it was only 73 degrees so it's not like it was like 80 degrees but here's the thing the course is not shaded like at all for the most part the only shade is in the first few miles and like that doesn't mean anything because you're not even like that hot at that point and also the race starts at 10 30 a.m so it's already later in the day. Um, so by the time I hit mile 16, which is the hills, um, I'm like almost two hours into the race. And so it's like 1230 PM. And that's when you're really hitting the wall and you've been running for so long. And that's when it gets hard, like even harder in the boss marathon course. And the sun is just like beating down and it's like, you're just working so hard. So your body's already hot. And it was just like, it was a perfect storm. And, um, I mean, it was, it was crazy, but again, I mean, yes, you can't really prepare for the heat, but also just like, I just haven't, I haven't run in 73 degree weather since last summer. Like, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't ever that hot on any of my training runs for Boston. So yeah, it's like, and also I, I never in high school, I never ran well in the heat either. I remember being so nervous for like state track because it was like June at that point and it was hot and like not shaded at all. Um, so I don't know. It's just like, that just wasn't, wasn't a variable that worked for me that day. What, uh, what's the atmosphere of the Boston marathon? Like, cause it is a national holiday. It's a national, it's a holiday in Boston. Like people, everyone gets mm-hmm. a day off. Oh my God. It was the best atmosphere ever. Like literally I can't even explain how insane all the cheering was. Like everyone is out on the course and going crazy. Yeah. Like everyone has school off and just the entire weekend is just like the energy there is just like so awesome. And everyone said that everyone was like, when you get to Boston that weekend, you're just going to like feel it. And I was always like, eh, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but, but it's true. And I think honestly, when I got there, it like helped quell my nerves like a little bit because the, the atmosphere was just so incredible. Um, and the city just goes all out for it. I think, especially since the bombings in 2013, um, it just means so much to them. And like, compared to LA where there weren't many spectators, like at all, like to not nearly the same extent, um, it was a really cool experience. And I honestly, I keep saying, so like at the top of Heartbreak Hill at mile 21 is BC, which was amazing. So many people cheering. And then after that, you, you make your way into the city of Boston. And that's when like the crowd, the crowds are amazing the entire 
way, but like, especially those last five miles. Um, and that is when I personally was in the most pain. So I couldn't fully enjoy it, which was upsetting to say the least. Um, that's why I want to do it again at some point, because I want to run it right and be able to like, enjoy those last five miles because that's when the crowds are just like even more insane too. Um, so the atmosphere was just like second to none. I think, I mean, people say New York is also crazy and I'm doing New York in November, so I'm going to have to compare, but I do think that Boston has this like pride about the marathon that like no other city has. It's really cool.